What's going on guys, Dan Watson, and this is the new Sony 7200 F2.8 version two. And this is actually now the lightest 7200 F2.8 zoom in the world, which is pretty crazy because this is still a tank of a lens and it actually has a brand new optical formula, some huge AF upgrades in this thing. It is loaded like crazy, but we're gonna check this out with this right here. So stay tuned, subscribe if you haven't already, and we're gonna have some fun with this. So one of the more interesting things when Sony first announced that they were gonna be upgrading this lens is that they're actually keeping the old 70 to 200 F2.8, which is a 2016 model, about five years old, I believe, on the market. And when I first found that out, I was like, oh crap, Sony's gonna go crazy with the pricing on this in order to justify keeping both of these lenses on the market. Thankfully, it seems like the pricing is gonna be pretty static. I mean, this was already a pretty expensive lens, cheaper than the Canon 7200 F2.8 RF lens, but still very expensive. But thankfully, the prices are pretty static here, not a huge upgrade from what we were paying before. So it's gonna be interesting to see how these two lenses compare. So I'm gonna be shooting these side by side to see which one should you buy, which one should you upgrade to. Definitely stay tuned for some videos on that one. You can subscribe, turn on notifications, follow some BTS over on IG, but let's get into everything new with this 7200. All right, so the hardware of this, it's actually got quite a few new features on it, despite it looking almost identical to the last year one. So obviously Sony chose to go with an internal zoom, internal focusing on this. And what's interesting is Canon got a lot of hype for their external zoom on their 7200 RF that they just came out with. Well, the advantage here is that somehow Sony still managed to keep weight savings a thing to where this is actually lighter than that version of the lens. But also, uh, we don't have to worry about uh, having any kind of dust and moisture or anything like that. There's better resistance in this. And then also, we have a very similar weight distribution to before. And the center of gravity doesn't shift as much when we go to zoom from 7200. So if you're somebody like me and shoots on a gimbal all the time, or if you want to manage your weight on a tripod and keep things moving, Ocean free then this is a great savings on that one so uh, for me I would I like the extra room in a bag from the RF version but if I were to take any one keeping that weight down but then still maintaining a lot of these hardware advantages seems like the best ticket so you guys would probably think in order to keep the weight down that Sony was gonna be removing some features or maybe switches hardware dials something to keep this weight down what's amazing is that they're actually increasing the amount of things in this lens, despite this being actually closer in weight to the 7200 F4 and not the old 7200 F2.8, which is a crazy weight reduction on that one. There is a lot going on with this one. Probably the most notable is that you now have a variable aperture control. This is actually declickable too via a switch on the bottom of this. So you can declick the aperture on this. I don't know if people use this for photos. I will use this for video for getting some smooth aperture changes or smooth exposure changes using my aperture. So it's really cool for that one, but you can click or unclick that one. Also, we have a new DMF switch and that allows you to manually focus after the camera has focused the lens and you can turn it on or off via the lens. You also have your optical image stabilization with three different modes on that one plus an iris lock. So if you turn that on, when you put your iris into that automatic mode and hit lock, you won't accidentally move it out. So that's really good. So you don't have to worry about this control if it's something that you don't use, you just get all the benefits from it. Also, Sony is increasing the macro abilities of this. So 
0.3x macro, and that is actually way better than what Canon and Nikon are doing with their 7200. So if you wanna do some macro modes, again, not a macro lens, but this is definitely some super close focusing for a 7200. Now internally, this is a brand new optical design, and if you're somebody who happens to be more nerdy than me, which congratulations, because that's not that easy to do, I'll go ahead and throw the optical formula and some key aspects of it right up here so you can check that out. But for me, the big feature was going to be the four linear XD motors. And I first saw this design, I think in the 135 F 1.8 G master lens, and it made a huge difference for focus speed. And I am definitely seeing that here as well. You can noticeably tell the difference between this and the outgoing generation there. In fact, Sony says it is four times faster. And again, something that we'll test side by side with these coming up real soon. But overall, it is a big improvement. And plus you have a more linear response to the manual focus ring. So that for me means that it's actually usable because I despise any lens that does not have linear response to manual focus. I just won't even use it if it doesn't. So this is absolutely awesome. We have four custom or actually three custom buttons also around this, just like the old version, which is really nice to see. But another big feature on here is that you are also gonna get the same optical and focus properties when you're using this with the 1.4X and 2X teleconverters. So big because I know a lot of you guys depend on those teleconverters. So absolutely the same performance when you use it with Sony's teleconverters. So obviously there's a lot going on here for photographers, but videographers as well get pretty excited because you have a lot going on. So first of all, you do have much better performance with focus breathing. You also have that more linear response to manual focus. You have those four XD linear motors, which were incredibly smooth for autofocus. Plus you have that manual aperture dial, so you can control exposure and aperture via a stepless ring on it. And then also the weight savings on this were massive. So it meant that I could just throw this on a gimbal. And I'm talking a normal gimbal. I used the DJI RS two threw it on there and it made a huge difference. Having this so much lighter meant I could have the entire assembly move forward a whole lot so I didn't have off balance issues. And if you wanna see how this actually went, here's how it went down. So I've been testing this lens with the Sony A1 for the past couple of weeks, and there are some big difference in real world performance. So absolutely the autofocus is keeping up with everything I'm throwing at it, and I'm throwing at it a Lamborghini Huracan, moving very quickly, accelerating, decelerating, doing all kinds of stuff, and this lens focused perfectly with that. And then I don't know if this is more the camera or the lens, but I will say the smoothness of the focusing has been a huge improvement, probably because of that linear aspect plus the combination with the A1. It is incredibly smooth to see the shift between each frame and the focus just keeping up with all the motion going on on it. And I'm sure you could probably guess, but obviously this is an incredibly sharp lens, but to the point that at f2.8, even zoomed in past 100%, you really cannot tell the difference between f2.8 and stopping down to f5.6. In the corners, it is a slight difference as you start to move through the apertures, but very minor. And keep in mind, this is with the Sony A1, a 50 megapixel camera viewed at over 100%. So if you want to be able to shoot at f2.8 all day long, you will really not notice a difference in optical quality. Now, moving a bit more to those background out of focus areas, bokeh on this is very very good. You're not seeing like any onion rings or any kind of noticeable issues on it. It's not quite as buttery smooth as some of like the better prime lenses on there. This is probably the only area that the lens kind of goes from stunning more to like very good as far as performance is concerned, but it is still doing a great job even in those background areas. Flare is also very well controlled. I know this is 
pretty subjective because my wife loves a lot of flair to even lose a little bit of contrast for things like portraits on here. But I tried to make it flare and honestly, it did a pretty good job controlling it and keeping contrast throughout the frame. Now, I was a little surprised to see this lens upgrade so early. I mean, the old one is still keeping up and holding up very well, despite it being about five years old. That's not that old in terms of lens years either. But this new formula, I mean, Sony has made a lot of improvements with both optical quality as well as autofocus systems, both in their cameras and their lenses. So seeing those upgrades in here is really helping to justify it. But the weight savings to me made it a lens that I use a whole lot more. I mean, if you pick up both of these side by side, it just feels like half of the internals of this have been completely ripped out. There's that big of a difference. And that's gonna really help sell this lens. I mean, this was an expensive lens and a very difficult one to really justify for me, but having the brand new optical formula, all of these features, autofocus abilities, and a lens that I will use so much more because it is that much lighter this is gonna make this an extremely popular lens and really help justify the pretty extreme price for a 70 200 f2.8. But definitely hit me up with what you guys are doing. If you like this lens, if you're picking up this lens, maybe you're also waiting for that Tamron 35 to 150 f2 to f2.8. Should have that in any day, so stay tuned guys. Some pretty crazy stuff coming up. I'm really excited to share it with you. So hope you guys are doing amazing. Stay tuned, subscribe, like, and I'll see you soon in a new video.